the spokesperson to Vice President Yemi Oshiba Jalalua Konde says the Vice President has not called for the devaluation of the Naira. In his clarification of what Professor Shiba just said at the midterm review of President Muhammad Buhari's second term in office, Akunde said Oshibaja was advocating a forex policy that curbed arbitrage and corruption, thereby offering customers cheaper dollars. According to Akunde, the vice president called for measures that would increase the supply of foreign exchange in the market rather than simply managing demand, which opens up irresistible opportunities for arbitrage and corruption. Here is what Professor Shiba just said at the retreat. For well, the exchange rate, I think we need to move our rates uh, to a more reflective market, as, uh, more, as reflective of market as possible. This, in my own respectful view, is the only way to improve supply. We can't get new dollars into the system where the exchange rate is artificially low. And everyone knows by how much our reserves can grow. So I'm convinced that the demand management strategy currently being adopted by the CBN Needs, we need to rethink, uh, and that's just my view. All right, to help us understand this further, let's bring in economist, writer, and former presidential candidate, Dr. Fasher. Glad to have you join us. I agree. Thank, Thank you for, for joining writing. us. Good. Uh, what's your sense of the v VP's comment that the exchange rate of the Naira to the dollar is artificially low, and so Nigeria is finding it hard to get new dollars into the system? Well, I think I'm sorry, uh, it's a bit cliched. And we've heard that for so long, you know, unfortunately. Um, sometimes it gets, these things get adopted and become received wisdom. Um, in 1986, we had the same thing. The IMF and World Bank advised us. We devalued to three Naira initially, and then four Naira later. And subsequently, you know, we, that went to about 12 Naira, then 22 Naira. We kept hearing it was artificially low, it was unrealistic, you know. Down to 22 Naira, went to about 40, 50 Naira, went to 80 Naira, 99 Naira. Then it jumped to 120 Naira. We still heard it was unrealistic, you know. And then from 120 to 140 to 155 under Jonathan. And, you know, then of course they kind of got to 199 under Jonathan. And the government, this government came in. Um, and since then we heard it was still unrealistic and then we moved up to 306. We moved up to 360, we moved up to 389, now we're on 414. And I'm talking about officially, and each time the uh, Naira was devalued officially, um, you know, the, the parallel market also jumped. Uh, meaning that there's something more structural at play, and that's wrong with the economy beyond, um, beyond that, you know, if you like, that conjecture that the Naira was artificially uh, priced or was not realistically priced. And, mm. however, you know, I mean, coming from the VP, and, well, it's great that they're walking it back, really, um, but coming from the VP, it's heavy because, uh, in fact, do you know that um, a certain a series was done on this very issue? I forget the name now, but uh, in, in that series uh, on TV, on Netflix, uh, Nigeria was used as a case study. A couple of guys fictionally said they heard from the central bank governor of Nigeria that they were going to devalue the currency. And therefore, they said, look, we need to move against this and make some money from it. And they put down $5 billion and, you know, it, and they shorted the Naira. When you're shorting the Naira, what it means is generally that you could borrow Naira and buy dollar from a bank, you know, borrow Naira, buy dollar and hold, all right? Knowing that Nigeria was going to devalue currency. And of course, when they did that, they had to come together as a group in that series, fictionally, Nigeria devalued and these guys cashed out. Well, so, you, so you don't want to go down that route as a, as a vice president. Now, uh, as, even as a central bank governor, you need to be very careful what you say. And we continue to go that route on the road of devaluation. Like you said, it seems to be a road that we find ourselves on every now and again. But is a market reflective rate the same as devaluation? If um, not, exactly what is it when the, you know, the vice yes, president says, um, also, you, you actually mentioned the CBN now. Let me even put this in, that uh, the CBN's dollar demand management strategy needs a rethink. So what exactly is the fundamentally wrong with the, what the CBN has been doing with its dollar management? I personally see absolutely nothing wrong with what the CBN is doing. You either manage the demand or you manage the supply, right? The Central Bank of Nigeria will do 
pretty much little in terms of the supply. Um, uh, you know, the, the point is, okay, where does the supply come from? It should come from things like tourism, like export, you know. And so the Central Bank probably has quite a, Of course, in, the, in that same speech, the vice president also criticized the fact that the CBM was intervening to perhaps a little bit too much on the fiscal side. Mm -hmm. So some of the intervention is about driving exports as well. But mind you that when you're trying to drive export, it's not an immediate thing, really. You know, you, you, you do your interventions, you try, you lend money. Central Bank is actually a monetary policy institution. However, uh, it's been noted around the world that in periods of crisis, which is what Nigeria has been for quite a while, you know, monetary policy institutions tend to make incursion into fiscal policy, but which is not a bad thing at all. So, but the central bank is more concerned with okay demand side. For example, we had maybe six, seven thousand bureau of change, and they were sending out this money, just trying to manage that stuff and so on. At some point in time, they said, "Listen, we can't continue with this policy. Everybody wanted a, a BDC, uh, you know, a license, and so they stopped it." You know, so there's nothing wrong in managing demand and ensuring that the demand that comes to you are legitimate. There's also nothing wrong in appealing to Nigerians like we need to. That look, this is an obsession with dollar. It's, it's something else. Like, mm. I don't know any country in the world, all right, where there are people who are more obsessed with getting dollar, holding dollar, keeping dollar, like Nigeria. And, and in fact, and then, you know, so there's a lot of issues here, including the fact that, you know, the country is considered to be unsafe. So we're talking about the supply side and investment coming in, whether they're talking of foreign portfolio investment or foreign direct investment, the first consideration is security. If the people perceive that Nigeria is unsafe, not even the foreign portfolio investor who wants to come and put money in bonds would like to come to Nigeria to do anything. And that's where the, the, the president and the vice president need to be really worried. I mean, as we speak, there's a certain emir still in captivity 31 days after, a whole emir. Mm -hmm. Captured on, you know, Abuja Kaduna Expressway. So that's enough cause for worry beyond, you know, the, uh, so that's nice, making it sound nice, like, okay, they just don't want to come because so of a certain mismatch. Well, no, we can't take that okay, question. Okay, we can't take that question. No, we can't, right. take, no, we can't right. even take that question. Oh. Uh, thank you so much uh, for being with us on News Night. Dr. Fashua there, that's right. an economist, a writer, and of course, a former presidential candidate.